Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. Let's read 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. It's actually a closing salutation. I never really paid a lot of attention or gave it much importance before, but it's important because sometimes he would ask people, ask the church to pray for him, or you know, he would give them this last bit of advice, like, so focus on this, or do this, or whatever, you know? And, and so those words have to be taken seriously, right? And so this is one such um, ending salutation, which I think is of great value. And in this closing salutation, there are three very important things. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is what he left them with. First of all, what stands out to me is, you see the Trinity right here. You see Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and so amazing. Okay, now let's break it down a little bit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is His empowerment. John Bevere has many wonderful studies on this topic. I think he's also written some books on this topic. And of course, others have done um, as, uh, the same as well. But I do like the way that he puts it. He's, he defines grace of the Lord Jesus Christ as the power at work in situations beyond our ability. It is the power of God at work in our lives in situations that are beyond our natural ability. Love it. It's God's empowerment. Do we need the grace of the Lord, do you think? Oh, yes. Absolutely. And it also gives me so much comfort. You know that, oh man, the grace of the Lord Jesus at work in my life. Thank God. Otherwise, I would put too much unnecessary pressure on myself to achieve things or to be a changed person, etc., etc. To do anything in life, I would put that pressure on myself. That's where striving comes from, right? So there's rest. There's rest. What does that mean? Rest does not mean that we're just like sitting on the couch not doing anything. It means that we're not striving with our own strength because we have received a revelation of the grace of the Lord Jesus. That's rest. Because we understand that His power is at work in our lives, okay, in situations beyond our natural ability. This is also why you see this in, in, in the Bible so much, but especially Apostle Paul would say this, your grace is sufficient for me, God, because then your strength, His strength, right, is made perfect in our weakness. Okay, second, the love of God. This is so foundational. This is so important. But unfortunately, what has happened is um, people have come up with their own definitions of the love of God and what the love of God does for us. Or it, it, it's, it's all kind of watered down, unfortunately. But I'll say this. If you receive a revelation of the love of God, your life will be changed. Number three, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I immediately think of, you know, in the book of Acts where they said that the disciples, they walked in the fear of the Lord and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they grew in number. That's amazing. But there are promises <laughs> in these words. I've made so many videos about all these uh, things, the grace of God and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. But I'll put it this way. I thank the Lord every day for the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew exactly what we needed or who we needed. You know, His Spirit living inside of us, teaching us all things comforting us, even helping us understand who we are and who God is. And so what? You know, and He brings clarity. He helps us understand everything we need to know. He is the reason why we can enjoy eternal life. This, this beautiful relationship with the Lord Jesus. How? How do we achieve that? It is with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that oneness, that unity with Him. 
Now, when I was meditating on this verse, 2 Corinthians 13, 14, I thought about 1 Corinthians 2, 9, the Holy Spirit. See, this is, what, this is why fellowship with the Holy Spirit is important because He brought that verse, this other verse, to my remembrance. You know, some people have asked me, like, oh, what's your process behind uh, writing sermons or messages and, and just Bible study? I don't necessarily have a process. I just go be with the Lord. <laughs> Sincerely, I tell you, my process is simple. And, and this is true for so many people, too, you know, not just for me. The process is, is simple. You just go be with the Lord and trust that He will bring things to your remembrance. Verses, song lyrics, a memory, uh, a vision, a prophecy, all these things. Knowledge and understanding, we cannot grow in these things and in wisdom without the help of the Holy Spirit. So practically speaking, what does that look like? You go be in the presence of the Lord. He brings those things to your thoughts at the right time. And then you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And then you write it down and then you're sitting with that for a while. And then he's like, oh, and how about this too? Oh, and then look this up on Google. Holy Spirit does that for us. Thank God. So 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it says, It is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Now, I'm sure a lot of people have heard this verse or read this verse before. So what do you get from this? You're probably thinking, okay, so that means one cannot fully understand or even know what God has in store for them, okay? But he does have good things in store for them. All right, now that sounds okay, but you have to read verse 10. The very next verse says, these are things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. That's amazing. The Holy Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. What does that mean? It means that the Holy Spirit makes us understand what God has given us freely. All those things we read about in verse 9, the Holy Spirit makes us understand what those things are. He reveals those things to us, so it's no longer a, a secret. You can know what these things are. You can experience these things for yourself because the Holy Spirit reveals these things to you. The Holy Spirit knows and understands fully well God's thoughts. What is on His mind right now? What is he thinking? What's, what are his desires? What is the will of God? The answers to all these questions are with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he knows everything there is to know about God. So how amazing is it that the, this same Holy Spirit is living inside of us? And wow, he makes us understand what God has given to us freely. This is why fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit is absolutely key. If we don't understand what God has given to us freely, we're not going to experience those things, right? Seems obvious. Unfortunately, a lot of believers do not really know what God has promised them. Blessings are available right now. A lot of believers don't know that they have access to various blessings. They don't know that. I can't even move on to the next point that I have written down without touching on this point too, and that is about knowing God. This is why Apostle Paul would all, always talk about this. Knowing God is the most important thing. There are so many dimensions to knowing God, and we have to desire to know Him like that. And the more we know about Him, He expands our capacity to desire more. It's amazing how that works. Now, Ephesians 3.20. Let's read what that says. It says, Him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. He's talking about God. As though one word is not enough to prove the point, you know. <laughs> Look at the words, exceedingly, abundantly, above all <laughs> that we ask 
or think. According to the power that is at work in us. Go big, multiply, go. These are the words that have been running through my mind a lot lately. That, you know, the, that God has blessed each and every one of us with a purpose and a plan for our lives, okay? And if we make it a priority to, to go after the Lord, to, to know Him more, then we are going to find out what His plans are for our life, for our lives. And when we find out what our, what our gifts are and what our calling is, and we walk in it, and we do what God wants us to do, then automatically we will be happy. You will be fulfilled and you'll be happy. But not just that, but you will see multiplica multiplication happening in your life. I truly believe that. And so these words, go big, multiplication, and the word go. These words have been just like ringing in my ears. And this is the Lord's desire for all of us is to multiply what He's given us. See, people would like to think that it's not conditional. Like grace of God, you know, He, he will just give it to you no matter what. But there is something called stewardship. We need to stop thinking so small. Seems like such an obvious thing, but really, we need to think about this every day, how big our God is and the plans that He has for us are also big. So we need to stop thinking small and then go, not go home, <laughs> go big or go home. No, go, go where He sends you and the provisions are already there. That's the thing. That's the grace of God. It's God's power at work in us, right? In situations beyond our ability, beyond our natural ability. So how does that connect to what we're talking about right now? Go and He will multiply. The provisions are there. His grace is sufficient for you. Just be obedient to Him. He, he'll take care of the rest. Let's sit with this for a minute. The power that is at work in us, it's continuous. It is present tense. And it's also continuous, okay? What is the purpose of this power that is at work in us? I wrote down three things. One, to conform us to His image so we can look more like Jesus for His glory, right? Reminds me of the verse that says that we are like earthen vessels. And what, I'm paraphrasing this, what gives us our than vessel, you and I, value is what is on the inside of us. What's on the inside of us? The Holy Spirit. So one, to conform us to His image for His glory, also to transform us. Number two, to empower us, to enable us, just like we've been talking about all this time. That's what the grace of God does, right? To empower us, why? in order to break ha bad habits, okay, so you don't remain the same forever and ever. See, one thing um, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot too, is that there is a personal responsibility that you and I have, okay, to be transformed. We cannot be satisfied or be okay with just being the same old you, you know. And in fact, the more you get to know the Lord, and you're fellowshipping with Him, you will have this crazy desire to want, you know, to, to be transformed and to be more like the Lord. You will not want to remain the same, and you won't. You won't remain the same because of His power at work in you. To break habits, uh, also to do the impossible. And number three, I wrote down to sustain us. The sustaining power does not belong to us it's God's and I thank the Lord for that I just quickly looked up the 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 meaning of the word sustain it means strengthen or support physically or mentally another word assist encourage comfort help support so that should give you the courage to keep going 
to be laser focused on the Lord and the task that he has given you to do and not be afraid to just go for it. Another thing that's coming to my mind right now is, um, and I remember talking about this with a friend, you've created this image in your mind of what ministry must look like. So it looks big or it looks like this big assignment that the Lord has blessed you with. Whew, it's exciting. It should be exciting. But sometimes we get too focused on how big that, I, you know, that, 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 that idea is or that, that desire or that assignment is that you may have forgotten that every day <laughs> we have work to do. So we don't have to wait till it looks good enough or big enough or woohoo, like, you know, yeah, this is, this has the glory of God resting on it. You know what I mean? Like, so you're not waiting till that happens um, in order to start doing something as far as ministry goes. And I guess right now in this moment, I'm speaking specifically to those of you, like I said before, you know you're called into ministry. First of all, I want to say this. We're all ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking specifically to those of you who feel called to full-time ministry because I hear this often and I've also experienced this myself. You know, you build this, this false idea of what ministry must look like. Um, and until you see that manifest, you're not satisfied or you don't think anything else is the will of God for you. So you're constantly questioning yourself or you'll create like this, I don't know whether to call it doctrine or not, but, but you know what I mean? Like you, you, you create these, all these vague ideas of, oh, maybe this is happening because of this, or maybe this is warfare. Maybe this is my waiting season and, ooh. And, and then all of a sudden it's like all so confusing, no matter what season you're in. <laughs> Remember that the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you. How do we respond to that? That's the question something very important to think about okay i want to go to uh psalm 86 and verse 11. this verse right here is going to answer now what teach me your way lord that i will walk in your truth that i may rely on your faithfulness that that's what another version says give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. This is a prayer that you and I must pray today. Let's do this right now. Lord, Holy Spirit, teach me, teach us your way, Lord, that we may walk in your truth, that we may rely on your faithfulness. Give me, give us an undivided heart, Lord, that we may fear your name. You may be living in a way that is, you're not fully committed to the Lord. And I, I love this word faithfulness and or walking in, in truth. There is just no way that you and I can be faithful to God. To be a faithful servant, isn't that what this Christian life is about? We cannot be faithful to Him and produce fruit in our lives that brings glory to God. And we cannot live uncompromisingly, we cannot if we do not fear his name and if we are double-minded because it's guaranteed that if you are double-minded that you are resistant to God. You are not fully under his lordship. I know hearing that may be confusing some people. You may be now questioning yourself. Wait, so does that, are you, are you saying that I'm not saved? No, if you have received Jesus into your heart, you are saved. I'm not going to question somebody's salvation here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you can be a Christian. You can have the title. Okay, but also not be fully devoted to God. That's why fear of the Lord is so important. That's why fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wow, like that, that's imp that is so makes me want to just pause this video and just sit and think about that for a while. <laughs>
That's important, right? Because I'm thinking of using our time wisely, you guys. Being a good steward of t the time. The time, the gifts God has given you, all of that. I'm going to give you two examples. One, well, yeah, one is a story that I heard someone share and the other one is a testimony of a fellow classmate. Uh, a man, he was a businessman, very successful. He was talking to this pastor about how he wasn't feeling very fulfilled in life. He narrowed it down to, you know, I think I need to focus on my, my faith journey, my relationship with God. I've been too busy and so focused on my business and I'm doing very well. And I think I've reached a point where I can hand it off to someone for a little while, maybe a year. And I think I need to just, you know, focus on my spiritual walk. And the pastor said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. That's, I mean, I really commend you for thinking this way. So he like prayed with him and blessed him and sent him off, right? So a year goes by and they meet again. And the pastor was so excited to see him and he asked him, so how did the last year go for you? And this man, he was so embarrassed. He said, um, I, did, I did take the time off, as I said, but something else got my attention. I got busy, I got, you know, so, I got distracted. So no, I didn't read my Bible. I didn't focus on my relationship with God like I wanted to. It's a sad story, isn't it? Where the man had one year, he even took the time off from his business. So that sounds good, that was a good decision, but he didn't take advantage of that time. If something else got his attention and he went behind that. So if it's not work, it's gonna be something else, you guys. Now think about this. Listen to this, I meant to say. My classmate, she is 95 years old. She just graduated from college with a degree in biblical studies. Before she joined, she called up the director of the Bible college and asked her, um, hey, do you take like really old people? And the director was like, yeah, if you, wanna, if you wanna come to school, you should come. That's awesome. And she like really encouraged her and, and she signed up. So at 93 years old, she joined the college. It's a two-year program. She joined school and it just completely blessed her life. She had lost her, her husband, the first husband. She lost, um, I think it was um, to some kind of illness. And she got married to the second husband uh, to whom she was married for, I don't know, a very long time. They had a great relationship and, you know, wonderful kids. In the last several years of his life, he was very sick. So my friend spent basically all her life taking care of her family and she did it happily. She served them very well. But when he also passed away, she had no clue what to do with her life. She was a Christian and, and still, you know, she felt very lost, like, okay, now what? And that's when she called the Bible college and said, I, I, I want to come to school. She went on a mission trip and all kinds of stuff. And this lady, I'm telling you, I've seen her in action, okay? She'll be walking by and she'll stop someone on the way and say, hey, is there anything I can pray for you? <laughs> or, hey, how are, you, how are you doing today? And one thing leads to another and then she'll be praying for them or something. Is she doing ministry? Yes, she is at 95 years old. So you can be nine years old, 19, whatever, 40, 50, 60, 90, 100 years old, and God still has a plan and purpose for your life. You can still serve the Lord. Trust the plans of God for your life and just go for it. Remember those words? Remember those words? Go big, go, and God will multiply the, your efforts okay they will not go to waste in that first story we heard how the man wasted one year of his life and nothing good came out of it he just got busier and then in my friend's example you see she used two years of her life fully committed to the lord fully committed to learning and unlearning some things that she thought were true but she learned the truth about what God says about various things. And she received revelation after revelation about so many things, about healing, about love of God, and all these wonderful things. And now, two years later, because she used that time wisely, God is now able to trust her. She believes that God is using her. That's important too, like it, her perspective has shifted and she doesn't think that, oh, you know, now I'm just an old person, I'm just gonna go live somewhere and just like, you know, whatever happens, happens and 
who knows, I might even die and you know. I just want to be faithful to God and that's my prayer for all of us is that we will realize just how precious this life is and the fact that God has given something, He's put something in your hands, that's right, in your hands. Find out what that is, steward it well and see what God can do in and through you. God, God wants, wants to use us to touch various lives. There's a lot going on on this planet. Ah, some of the things that I, I'm reading about and hearing about, it's just, it makes my blood boil and makes me angry and upset and sad. And then I'll sit down and think about it. And the question is, okay, what, what's one thing I can do uh, to make a difference? There are things that you and I can do, but you know, it's not as simple as saying, okay, just go out and just do something. No, we have to represent him well and walk in the truth, remember? To be faithful stewards and ambassadors of God, we have to represent Him well. What's, what's important is, is your version, my version of Jesus, the same as what the Bible teaches us? Is, is it the real Jesus that you and I are talking about? Like, what version are we taking out into the world? And that's a sad thing is, you know, there are so many different versions of Jesus today. People are just creating whatever Jesus they want to create whatever is convenient for them, whatever serves them the best, whatever serves their agenda the best, whatever doesn't get them into trouble. <laughs> it's all compromise. What the Bible says is true. And, and also, we're not just reading something, okay, well, the Bible tells me Jesus is this way. Okay, all right, fine, I'll go with that. No, he's real and we can experience him. We can taste and see that the Lord is good. And then we can represent him well. Ah, that's exciting. Then we can be faithful.